Well, good morning. It's Saturday morning, my time. Probably not your time, since this is on-demand backstage pass. If you've been following my blog, baldnerd.com, then you know that um, I've been really excited and experimenting with uh, the use of a DSLR for uh, for video broadcasting using Telestream Wirecast. So we're talking as a live camera source. Now, of course, there are expensive DSLRs that have clean HDMI output, and of course, the reason that we, you know, backing up a bit, the reason that we want to use a DSLR is the fact that it has a honking huge sensor, and the uh, interchangeable lenses allow for extremely high quality video compared to the form factor and the and the cost. So the camera that I'm looking at is a D5100 from Nikon. It comes with an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And uh, they're available now that they're a little bit, uh, you know, they're past stock. Uh, you can get them refurbished for about 350 bucks. Uh, and, of course, you can also get them new for about 500, 550 bucks in around there. You'll find the links for that as well. If you want to see uh, pricing, make sure you go to my blog, baldnerd.com, and uh, you'll be able to find pricing uh, by following some of the links that I have there for B&H and Amazon and all that. So speaking about the sensor size, I mean, these are... Um, it's, it's a standard DSLR, and Nikon is known for making really great cameras. So what I have done... Now, I've got a D5100 here. Now, we got this refurbished, uh, and it cost 350 some odd dollars plus tax. Came with the kit lens. Now, I had to also buy uh, a couple of accessories for it for broadcast. So, we've got a shotgun microphone for, uh, for when we're shooting in the field. I got a bunch of SD cards and extra batteries and chargers and stuff. One of the things when you're shooting live video, though... I don't know about your Telestream Wirecast broadcast, but uh, fact is, is ours is a- an hour solid broadcasting. So we've got about you know 20 minutes before the show where cameras have to all be up and white balanced and, and uh, we have to set the exposures and we have to have the cameras up because HDMI being not hot swappable, if we have the cameras down and then we turn them on and everything's already live, we're going to blue screen of death our Windows broadcast server. So that's not a good situation. So there's a couple problems with the D5100 out of the out of the box. First problem is that the kit lens. I'm getting a little bit closer for you. This kit lens. This is the focus ring here. Okay. So if I zoom in and out, you'll notice that the focus ring, in fact, moves in and out of the camera. So that's not a good scenario if you want to use a follow focus device, uh, like which you're definitely going to want to do because DSLR the autofocus sucks. Plain and simple. I don't care how good they say it is. You'll see it in the in the specifications. Even a GH4 sucks. So don't depend on um, autofocus at all. You are going to have to have a camera operator or you're going to have to stand very, very still after you set it up. So as a cheap solution, just to get us up and going, here's what I got. A focus and zoom controller ring. So I, I haven't even opened this yet, but basically... Okay, so this just goes on to the lens with Velcro. So this is going to go on the outer edge of the lens where the uh, focus is. And if all goes well, if this stays on, let's see, it's not flexible at all. I'm sure that they, oh, there we go. Oh, you do have to actually pull it awfully tight, guys. Okay. So that's on there now. So now I've got this this gear mechanism, okay? So now as I zoom in and out, I've got the ability to just use a gear to adjust my focus. Now, I want to show you what we're actually using right now. The only way I can do that because we're using the camera is to actually shoot it on the DSLR. So you'll, you'll have a bit of an idea of the difference here in quality. So I was saying we're shooting an hour's video. So one of the problems is these batteries, uh, they, they're uh, ENEL14s. They last about 40 minutes when shooting HD video. Even less if you're using the built-in LCD, I'm sure. Uh, we don't do that because here's what we have. So I'm using the focus ring adapter now. So we're using the consumer camera up there. Now notice my auto exposure there. That's what you want to avoid as well. So I'm going to just calibrate to the floor. Uh, maybe calibrate to something else. There we go. 
All right, so now there's what I have. So this is with the 18 to 55 kit lens. You'll notice that it's jerky. Now that's our that's our monitor for the camera operator, and usually we have that ca the the monitor built into the camera, flipped around so that we the the host of the show can see as well. Uh, we're not going to have that anymore because the DSLR won't have live view on the uh, on the screen. I don't think it might. Um, So that's that's that. That's what that looks like. I think I was recording. <laughs> so, so that's kind of what we're doing right now. Now this consumer DS, uh, this consumer camera over there doesn't have nearly as good a quality as a DSLR, and that has to do again with the sensor size, the quality of the lenses, the interchangeable uh, interchangeability of the lenses, and so on. So this camera, the D5100, is built to take uh, up to 1080p video. Um, in order to uh, produce live view output, we have to actually hack the firmware. On my show, Category 5 Technology TV, we're going to show you how to do that. It's extremely uh, easy, but you probably want to see someone else do it first. Um, so what we have to do is we have to download the firmware from the camera, uh, for the camera, from the Nikon website, and then we have to hack it uh, so that it will allow clean HDMI output. So with clean HDMI output, we can generate uh, perfect 720p video output from HDMI. There's a mini HDMI output. Um, and uh, you can also go up to 1080i. Uh, everything is 30 frames per second, though. So that's all you're going to get from the HDMI output. Uh, but it's crystal clear. It looks really, really great. Um, and we're, again, going to demonstrate all that. So with the batteries only lasting about 40 minutes, that's a problem, right, when we're live broadcasting. So what I've done is I've gone and picked up this adapter. Again, there are links for this uh, in my blog, uh, but you can go to shop.category5.tv. What they've done is it, it's pretty smart. It's a battery pack because there's no AC input on this camera, right? So it is uh, an EL14 battery pack, and it just goes in where the battery goes on the camera, and you've just got a, a cable hanging out of your camera. And that's got the, uh, the AC transformer pack and plugs right into, I would say, a UPS would probably be your best bet. reason I would plug this into a UPS and not into the wall or into a power bar is because you are not going to have any battery power on your camera. So if the power were to fluctuate or go out for a moment, your camera is going to shut off. So this I would power from a UPS. Uh, just to give you that little bit of extra battery backup so that if the power does go out, you've still got power going to your camera. But that's all there is to it. So that's a really cheap part. I mean, that one I got for about 30-something dollars. You can get them, you know, 30 to $50 kind of range. Uh, there are a couple of cheaper ones too. Now, I went with a, a brand name Polaroid one, uh, thinking that maybe I want to stay away from some of the, the cheaper ones just because of the fact that this is going to be used for broadcast and I don't want to have any problems with, uh, you know, the bad um, capacitors in the transformer or something like that suddenly happening. Okay, so next up is, okay, well, I talked about follow focus. Follow focus, of course, now I'm using a ring adapter for now. Uh, we want to actually put a, a follow focus kit on the camera, and that's a dial wheel so that the camera operator can adjust the focus much more easily and much more um, seamlessly. So you're going to need to grab yourself a lens that has... Th that doesn't have the problem that the kit lens has. So this lens, for example, this is a Nikkor uh, 55 to 200, and with the 1.5 crop factor of the D5100, this is going to actually provide up to 300 millimeters of zoom. So that's pretty decent uh, for a cheap lens. So with this lens, uh, now we've got, you notice that the focus ring does not move, and the zoom ring does not move. So the, f the fact that the focus ring does not move is brilliant because you're going to be able to set this in the camera rig with the follow focus on the, uh, the focus ring and uh, you'll be able to adjust the focus with the dial because that doesn't move. So that's pretty good. It comes with the, uh, the little lens hood as well. Not a big deal. You'll probably want to put uh, something a little bit larger on that if you're working with studio lights and uh, stuff that, you know, in here we've got the fluorescence above our heads. So we would definitely want to have a, a decent um, something blocking the uh, reflections off of the lens so we don't get lens flares because after all this ain't Star Trek okay so anything else you guys want to see uh, beyond that I picked up these days you can get SD cards ultra cheap so what I've done is I picked up uh, a couple of little 4 gig SD cards because they're only 5 bucks so the reason I did that is 
I, I figure, okay, I'm going to need three firmwares for my D5100. I'm going to need one for shooting pictures, which is going to be the stock firmware. I'm going to need a firmware for shooting video in the field, which means the camera uh, LCD is going to have all of the controls on screen, and I'm going to be recording to SD card. So I need a firmware to actually do that because my final firmware is the one for live broadcasting, where in order to generate clean HDMI output, it has to actually remove all of the settings and uh, on-screen display stuff from the LCD because it's a mirror image going out over HDMI. So I have to have those three firmwares in my bag ready to flash at any time. So I've bought three different SD cards, uh, micro SD with an adapter, just so that I can very so I can generate the firmware now and take them with me everywhere I go, and I can flash my my camera at any given time. So if I need to shoot in the field. I can reactivate the on-screen display. Okay, so that's really all that you need to see right now. Uh, really, it's about the AC adapter, uh, being ready for follow focus. Uh, I think we're probably going to, uh, if, if the 200 millimeter lens will work in this space, I'm not sure it will. It's probably got too much telephoto to it. Um, but for now, we're going to use the 18 to 55 in studio and see how that works. I've also, one of the things is I've got a, uh, a nice long 25-footer uh, HDMI cable, which is going to give us some more flexibility because uh, right now we're limited with this consumer camera. It doesn't have enough oomph behind the HDMI to pump out a signal more than about uh, six feet. I don't know. Maybe it's a 10-foot cable, 15-foot cable. Uh, if I go any longer, if I try putting a 25-foot cable on it, it's just a black screen when we pull it into capture. So uh, so I'm going to try that with this, uh, this you know semi-decent 25-footer uh, cable and see if that's going to give enough signal off of uh, the HDMI on the DSLR. So that's what we're up to. Uh, I'm excited to be putting that together, and what you're going to get to do is, if you want to see it actually come together here at the studio, uh, you'll want to watch the features. So I'm going to be posting those in the Telestream forums uh, under Wirecast for Windows. I'm going to be posting them on my blog, baldnerd.com, and of course, it's going to be a part of Backstage Pass. If you've got a Roku, make sure you add the Category 5 Technology TV uh, channel, if you haven't already done so. And you'll find under uh, Special Features, you'll see a, a feature called Backstage Pass, which is anything that happens behind the scenes here, that's where it ends up. So things that don't actually air on the show, but it has to do with behind the scenes. So. Check that out if you haven't already done so. Make sure you follow us uh, and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, please. YouTube.com slash Category 5 TV. Also, YouTube.com slash Linux Tech Show is where you'll find some of our little uh, bites in our uh, Category 5.tv newsroom. Uh, so we've got a couple channels there available to you. And in the meantime, excited to be putting this together for you. Uh, I think it's going to work. We did run a test. You'll see on my blog, baldnerd.com, ran a test. Uh, Tally, you were there. I hooked up the DSLR to, uh, to our TV at home, a 720p uh, flat screen, and I just let it run with the hacked firmware, with the AC adapter. And we ran it, what, Tally, about a, an hour and a half? What? We ran the camera about an hour and a half at home, eh? She's really engrossed. What are you playing? She's playing Lemmings. Lemmings. My kids just discovered the Sega Genesis, and it's a wonderful thing. She's going to blow them up, she says. You know what? I'm thinking I'm actually going to put this thing up on the tripod and connect it in and, and see how it works. Um, so let's do that. Okay, so I've already flashed the hacked firmware into the D5100. So I'm just going to basically be able to plug all this in, hook it up, plug it into our Magewell capture card, and uh, let's see how it goes. There we go. I wonder if I should switch out the stock lens and actually give it a go with the 200 mil. Let's see what happens. It, one of the great things about, uh, about this whole rig is the fact that you can buy these cheap lenses. I say cheap, I mean you can get lenses as cheap as like 100 bucks um, that will do all different uh, things for you in different studio environments. So if you're shooting in a church, for example, something like this, the 200 mil that gives you 300 millimeters with the 1.5 crop factor, uh, this is going to be great for shooting all the way up to the, to the podium from the back of the church. 
So you just get a nice solid tripod, make sure nobody's tripping over wires and stuff, and uh, you can you can do it. There you go. So what am I going to get here as far as what kind of crop? That's a bit tight. That's as far back as I can go. Now, if I could back up the camera a little bit, does that make a difference? Because I might be able to do the 25-foot. Yeah, that's not bad, but look at what we can do. We can get right in there. We've got to go manual focus, remember? Look at that. This is recorded to SD card right now, but I'm going to be changing that in just a moment. Okay. So let's see what, what happens here. All right. 25 foot. I don't even know if this is going to work. Nice thin cable anyway. If it does work, I'll be pleased. <clears throat> Pop that in here. One of the things I want to do is make sure that this has got something to grab that cable if it gets tripped on. So I'm just going to I'm going to use the uh the camera strap actually which I'll probably end up removing if this ends up being our A-roll. A-roll, not to be mistaken for a hole. There we go. There, that just gives us something to grab onto. So that's, that gives us a good amount of length here. That's what she said. Let's see if I can go straight into the card without crashing the computer. There we go. All right. Just turned off. Now it's back on again. There we go. Remember, I'm on battery right now. Let's see if I can set up a shot. Okay, so here we are. Um, Pulling live video off the DSLR. I think I'm a little out of focus. I don't have a, somebody here to run focus for me. Um, pulling live video off the DSLR at 720p into Telestream Wirecast. So if my lips are moving at the right time, um, focus looks great. I love the narrow field of, uh, field of focus there. The uh, f-stop. That's cool. Doesn't that look super good on camera? Mug is out of focus. Bring it into the focus. You can't get that from a consumer, DS, uh, consumer camera like you can from a cheap DSLR. So Now, I do feel like it's stretched out. I'm not sure if that is the camera or if it's wirecast. I'm going to take a look at my shot here. Um, make sure that the aspect ratio is... Yeah... So I'm definitely stretched out. I'm not this fat. Um, I need to look at perhaps the frame is a little bit off in the uh, hacked firmware. So now I could manipulate that, but it's not perfect yet. So we're going to play around with it and see what, uh, what I can come up with. Let's sit where I'm in focus. So there you have it. So this is running off of the 25-foot cable, so I move the camera back a little bit. It's coming through our 7-inch um, camera monitor, um, so we can actually see the, uh, the live view from the camera as well as pull it into Telestream Wirecast, and I'll show you how all that's done uh, in the future uh, videos as well. But this looks a lot better. I don't have the lights on. Um, this looks a lot better than, uh, than what we were pulling on the, uh, the little consumer camera. That is for sure. So I'm excited to, to tweak things, get that crop factor a little bit better so that I'm not kind of squished this way and stretched out this way because that's not going to, you know, the camera adds 10 pounds. Well, don't add 20. Come on. Come on, camera. So we'll get that fixed as well. I'll talk to the guys over at Nikon Hacker and see if it's something that they need to do or if it's something I can do in the camera. Uh, we'll play around. So. All right, that's all uh, that I need to show you for today, but hope you enjoyed this little segment, and I will see you soon looking sharper than ever. Take care.